Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Paranjoy Guha Thakurta, and today we are going to discuss what happened in the Rajya Sabha and to discuss what happened in the Rajya Sabha, its implications, whether it is unprecedented or not. I'm very happy to welcome Mr. P. D. T. Achari. He's a former Secretary General of the Lok Sabha, the Lower House of Parliament. He was Secretary General of the Lok Sabha for 10 years between 2004 and 2014. That is the 14th Lok Sabha and the 15th Lok Sabha. And he understands parliamentary procedures and rules very, very well. Thank you so much, Mr. Achari, for giving us you. your time. Welcome, welcome. On Monday, the 21st of August, eight members of parliament, uh, opposition members of parliament, uh, in the upper house of parliament, that is the Rajya Sabha, they were suspended. These included uh, members like Derek O'Brien of the Trinamool Congress, Sanjay Singh of the Ahmadmi Party, Rajiv Sataf of the Indian National Congress, and K.K. Ragesh of the Communist Party of India, Marxist. Now, what happened on Sunday when discussions were going on about the bills pertaining, uh, the bills include uh, the Farmers Produce Trade and Commerce Bill and the Price Assurance and Farm Services Bill, there was a big hue and cry. And these bills that had been approved by the Lok Sabha earlier, and though the opposition obviously lacked the numbers to block the bills, the opposition wanted the bills to be sent to a select committee. The opposition members wanted to extend the discussion to Monday. And the deputy chairman, Harivansh Singh, Harivansh as we call him, he refused permission. He allowed the agriculture minister, Narendra Singh Tomar, to continue his reply despite a lot of Halabalu. What we saw was at one point of time, you know, the copies of the bill were torn and thrown. Microphones were wrenched from their handset. The Trinamool Congress member of parliament, Derek O'Brien, went up to the deputy chairman Harivan's desk, waved the rule book at him. And there was a lot of uh, unruly behavior. And, and at one stage, the marshals actually formed a human wall between the deputy chairman and the protesting opposition members. And the chairman of the Rajya Sabha, uh, who is also the vice president of India, Shri Venkaya Naidu, he said that the deputy chairman had been physically threatened and abused. And that was the reason why these eight opposition MPs were suspended. Now, We've seen unruly scenes in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, and, and we've now uh, seen a no confidence motion being moved against the deputy chairman, which has been rejected. And typically, both sides have been on both sides of the political divide, there have been predictable responses. The opposition has said there's been a murder of democracy. The prime minister said this is a historical day because of the passage of these bills. And uh, the opposition claims that the, 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 the Rajya Sabha deputy chairman broke every rule. And the Rajya Sabha television feed was also blocked. There was censorship. So, sir, I want you to explain to the viewers of NewsClick what you make of this unruly scene that took place. The unruly scenes and uh, ruckus, pandemonium in the house is nothing new. Uh, these used to happen uh, in the Lok Sabha quite often. And uh, it used to happen in the Rajya Sabha to some extent. Um, so there is nothing extraordinary about the ruckus in the house. Uh, Yesterday, uh, actually, you know, there are two things which are, which are, which are important when we look at yesterday's uh, happenings in the Rajya Sabha. <clears throat> One is that the 
house extended its sitting beyond one o'clock. They were to adjourn at one o'clock. They, the chair extended the sitting. Normally, the there is a consensus built up on extending the sitting. Uh, if there is no consensus, that means if the opposition does not agree, then the sitting is not extended and the house adjourns. That used to be the practice all through. But here, what I understand is that yesterday, the house sitting was extended without there being a consensus. And the opposition, naturally, they shouted and so on. But the proceedings went on. And during this extended time, the minister was asked to reply and the reply was given and then all the rest of the things happened. So why the chairman or the government thought it necessary to pass this bill yesterday itself by extending the time actually is not known. They could have passed it today by accumulating the views of the opposition. That is what normally is done in parliament, because nothing will be lost. The government has majority in any case. You know. In the Rajya Sabha also, they are the largest single party, and the other parties are there to support them. So they have nothing to fear, so far as the fate of the bill is concerned. But then the only problem was that they wanted to pass it yesterday itself. No, no, if I may just interrupt you, sir, what was the urgency? And what was the urgency of the deputy chairman, Mr. Hari Vansh, wanting to pass those bills on Sunday itself? This is something we are unable to understand. At the same time, does the chair, in this case, the deputy chairman, does he not, is it not within his discretionary power to decide to extend the session or not. I mean, after all, there is no rule or that binds him to that. I mean, it is his discretion, is it not? Actually, it is not his discretion. It is the decision of the House. That is a consensus. There is a sense of the House taken on such issues. The sense of the House is taken. That is what I said earlier, that even if, I mean, if there is no consensus. If the members in the opposition say that they don't agree to this proposal, then the chair adjourns the house. The chair would say that there is no, since there is no consensus, we are not going to sit beyond the scheduled time of adjournment. That is the normal practice. But yesterday, I do not know why no effort was made, no effort seems to have been made to bring the opposition on board, uh, and then action that should have been done. That is a normal practice that is uh, resorted to or followed in the legislature, particularly in parliament. Uh, Mr. Achari, there were also some other developments that were unusual. Now, before the voting took place, after all this ruckus, the opposition wanted physical voting. They wanted the votes, I mean, individuals who are present to cast their vote. However, the deputy chairperson decided to go along with a voice vote. Is this also unusual, out of the ordinary? So far as the voting procedure is concerned, uh, things are clear. According to the voting procedure, when uh, the debate is over, the chair puts the question before the house. Uh, uh, for example, the chair would say, um, uh, now the question is that the motion be adopted. There is a motion before the house. Everything is presented before the house in, in the form of a motion. So he would say that the question is that the motion be adopted. Those in favor say aye. So some people will say aye. And those against may say no, some people will say no. Then the speaker, will, uh, the chairman will say, I think the eyes have it. 
He will say that. And he stops there. Then a member, mostly from the opposition, stands up and says, no savage. No savage. That means he is challenging the decision of the chair. He wants a division. Then the chairman would say, let the lobbies be cleared. And the lobbies are cleared for three minutes. Then all the members who are sitting in the lobby and all that, they will come into the house. They will be ready for voting. He will repeat it again. Those in favor may say aye and no. And then the people will say no, the no's have it. Then he will say division. And then the members will press that button. The voting will be done. This is the process. Now, the question is, can the chair ignore a demand for voting? Voting means the division, actual voting in the house. The other is voice vote. Whether the chair can ignore a demand from members uh, for a voting in the house, I would say chair has no authority, no power to ignore a demand from the members for, a actual, for an actual voting in the house. He has to. Under the rules, he has to. The reason is that under Article 100 of the Constitution of India, the issue that is before the House, any question that is before the House, is decided by a majority of the members present and voting. Now, as you know, the majority can be decided. Majority is a very precise thing. Majority in terms of number. Otherwise, you cannot decide majority. Majority has no other meaning. Majority has to be decided in terms of the number. So that is determined by voting in the House. That is what the Constitution says. So Constitution is very clear. But the practice of voice vote is there, is followed in all the legislatures. When there is a presumption that the government has majority, it is okay. So we can pass it by voice vote. But if there is a controversy, and if there is a demand from the members that there should be a voting in the House, then the chair cannot ignore that, and the chair has to proceed to conduct the voting in the House. To the first point that you mentioned, which was that normally there should be a consensus on extending the sitting of a particular session in either House or Parliament. And unless there is a sense of the House and there is no consensus, uh, whether it's a Speaker of the Lok Sabha or the Chairperson of the Rajya Sabha or the Deputy Chairperson, whoever is in the chair, should abide by the sense of the House. That was given a go by on Sunday. The second point you say that the chair cannot ignore, he has no power, no authority to ignore a demand for voting, physical yes. voting as opposed to yes. voice vote. Am I correct, sir? Yes, absolutely. All right. Now let's come to the third equally contentious and controversial aspect of the proceedings of the Upper House of Parliament. And that was nearly 50, almost 50 members of the Rajya Sabha, all of them are belonging to opposition parties. They moved a no confidence motion against the deputy chairman, Mr. Haribanj. And this was rejected on Monday by the chairman of the Rajya Sabha, Mr. Venkaya Naidu. Once again, is this something unusual, unprecedented? The Constitution of India provides for a resolution to remove the deputy chairman in the case of Rajya Sabha. And the same provision applies to the speaker and the deputy speaker in the Lok Sabha. The only stipulation is that there should be a 14 days notice. If the notice period is less than 14 days, then it can be rejected. Then the notice should contain specific charges against the deputy chairman or deputy speaker or speaker. These are the two conditions which need to be fulfilled. And there is no other thing. Uh, there is no other ground on which a resolution can be rejected. I do not know 
on what ground this resolution has been rejected uh, i do not know but uh, sir the question that would arise is did the members of the rajya sabha who moved this no confidence motion against the deputy chairman hari vansh ji did they give a 14 day period a, a notice for 14 days did they specify specific reasons why they had lost their confidence in the deputy chairman are, are we aware of these two aspects of the no confidence motion moved by almost 50 members of the uh, belonging to opposition parties who are in the rajya sabha well, i i do not know i have no access to this uh, inside information uh, but what i am uh, saying is um, that as per the rules and as per the constitution this is the procedure that needs to be followed 14 days notice and as per the schedule uh, of the session the house is to adjourn on 10th of october 10th of october um and uh, if you go by that there is uh, 14 uh, 14 days are available 14 days are available because this motion is taken up uh, and put in the order paper after 14 days and that is why uh, that's why it's called 14 days notice period so it will be taken cognizance of and it will be put in the order paper <coughs> after the completion of this 14 days and if there are no 14 days left then the the notice can be rejected but in this particular case there are 14 days if the house is adjourning as per the schedule on for, on on 10th of october uh, that means they have 14 days so on that ground it cannot be rejected the other ground is that we should specify the charges against the deputy chairperson i do not know what charges have been made in the, because i have not seen that um and if uh, they don't conform to the rules in this regard then of course the chair can reject it if they don't conform to the rules again i must say that i have not seen the grounds which have been cited in the notice therefore i can't make any comment on that but tell me have there been any instances in the past any precedents of no confidence motions being moved against either the speaker of the lok sabha the deputy speaker of the lok sabha the chairman of the rajya sabha or the deputy chairman of the rajya sabha are there uh, instances Uh, of such no confidence motions being moved against uh, uh, th- these uh, uh, constitutional authorities yes in the lok sabha there are many instances there have been many uh, occasions when no confidence resolution was moved against the speaker as well as the deputy speaker but in the rajya sabha i have not come across any such instance where a no confidence motion was moved or resolution was moved against the deputy chairperson now so far as the vice president is concerned it stands on a different footing there the resolution has to come before the rajya sabha first it has to be passed and then it has to go to the other house and all that so there is a different procedure for that um but so far as the deputy chairman is concerned uh the procedure is the same as is applied to the deputy speaker and the speaker in the lok sabha so mr chari uh, what would you say is the big take away what happened on sunday and subsequently what has happened the suspension of eight members of the opposition in the rajya sabha if you i mean you've explained the 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 laws the rules the procedures but if you look at the big picture in what sense in in what respect i should say is the the the, the events that took place on sunday unique different out of the ordinary unusual unprecedented well I, as i said in the beginning ruckus or pandemonium uh, is nothing new in the houses of parliament 
and in other legislatures in the country. These have been occurring with greater frequency. <clears throat> and there are ways of dealing with that. There has to be a trust built up between the government and the opposition. In fact, I would remember one parliamentary affairs minister by name K. Raghuramaya. He was the minister for parliamentary affairs in Indira Gandhi's cabinet in the 70s, in the early part of 70s. He would be most of the time moving around in the opposition benches. He would come and sit with them, the leaders, even the ordinary members, and sit with them and discuss with them in the house itself. He was an extremely mobile um, uh, parliamentary affairs minister. In fact, I would say that he was a role model of parliamentary affairs minister. Although Indira Gandhi had no fear of uh, uh, no fear in the house, I mean she had an absolute two-thirds majority. In fact, so she had nothing to fear. But still, Raghuramaya would be sitting with the opposition members, building up a consensus and taking them on board. So that is the way in which Parliament should be conducted. Parliament business should be conducted to build rapport with the opposition. So that business is transacted with the cooperation of the opposition. You know, there is a famous dictum in parliamentary system, the opposition should have its say and the government will have its way. Government will have its way. That is a famous dictum. We should be followed in practice. The opposition should have its say. They should not get a feeling that they have been denied an opportunity to present their views. Similarly, the proper procedure is being followed and uh, enough opportunities are available to the opposition. If proper procedure is followed in everything, and that is why we have rules in the House. These rules are to be obeyed, followed in letter and spirit. Only then we can say that we have uh, a very smooth running of Parliament. Otherwise, it will give rise to resentment. And when there is resentment, the members, you know, they react in different ways. And uh, in the earlier Lok Sabha's, when I was there in, in, in the 70s, there was no occasion for members to come into the well of the house. This started much, much, much later. Nobody would think of coming into the well of the house in those days. There was no such instance at all. But there used to be very, 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 very good debates scintillating debates in the House. And they would often put the governments on the mat. But that kind of a thing is not seen these days. Now, the immediate reaction is to shout slogans and come to the well of the House. Well, that kind of a situation could be avoided, as I said. My point is this. If, a prop, if, if trust is built between the government and the opposition, if that is done, then I don't think this kind of a scene uh, will be repeated in the Houses of Parliament. If I can summarize your views, you then today believe that the trust between the government and the opposition has been broken. And what happened on Sunday by, by the, the decisions of the Deputy Chairman not to extend the session of Parliament, the, his decision in terms of the voting procedure uh, and, uh, you know, going ahead and not going with a, a physical vote, but a voice vote. And finally, uh, the no confidence motion against the Deputy Chairman of the Rajya Sabha. All these uh, are unprecedented uh, developments that have taken place. And these reflect the breakdown of the trust between the government and the opposition. So would this be a fair summary of your views? Mr. Chari. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for speaking with News Thank Clip. You. And Thank you. those who have been viewing and hearing the views of Mr. P.D.T. Achari, former Secretary General of the Lok Sabha, do keep watching News Click. Thank you for being with us.